Today, I'm building the biggest MIDI controller I own. Okay, so spoilers, I suppose. The big MIDI controller I'm talking about today is the Roland TD-17. Uh, this is an electronic drum set uh, made by Roland. This is actually the sound module here, or the brain of the whole kit. And uh, I picked this up about three years ago, and it's been uh, a, an indispensable tool in my arsenal that really I haven't used in the past year or so. Uh, since I played the last Freebeat Live show, we broke down the kit, and then I made this kind of weird standing drum kit thing that was going to be uh, going on tour with me, and the tour wound up falling through, so I figured it was time to get this drum set put back together. And that's because I actually have some really cool ideas for ways to use the drum set with some of my electronic music gear that I've never tried before. I really want to take advantage of the fact that the uh, drum set is a full-blown MIDI controller and that uh, I think I can really have some fun with some gear, especially uh, like the Micro Freak. Some new additions there have me excited. Hopefully we'll explore those later in this video. But for now, my problem is that I've got all of these kind of Frankenstein together pieces of drum rack uh, from this weird tour rig that I put together that I have no clue how to reassemble back into the drum kit themselves. I actually have a uh, picture of the kit pulled up here on my computer so I can sort of see how the rack is supposed to go. Uh, I'm just gonna base it off of that and uh, shoot for the best. So wish me luck, here we go. So mission accomplished. As you can see, I've got the drum kit set up around me. I'm a little cramped, uh, not only just in terms of general space, but there's a desk and a dresser behind me. Uh, but yeah, it's set up and we can hear it. Uh, now, if you watched my live stream a couple days ago on Wednesday, then you basically got to see me figure this setup out uh, you know, live as it happened. But if you didn't catch that stream, let me walk you through what we've got going on right here. So just to the left of the drum set, I've got this uh, little table here and I've got my Roland E4. That's how you're hearing my voice right now. This is a Shure SM57 and the cable is going right into the mic in jack on the Roland E4. Then the mix out of the E4 is going into the mix in on the back of the TD-17 drum brain. Now on Wednesday's live stream, we used the deluge over here on the table, but today I've got the Arturia Micro Freak set up here on the table. And that's because we're going to take advantage of uh, the TD-17's ability to be a MIDI controller. So on the back of the TD-17, there is a normal traditional five pin MIDI out port, and we can run a five pin cable all the way through to the input of the Micro Freak, which I can plug into the Micro Freak with this little 3.5 millimeter to five pin adapter. And that's gonna go into the MIDI in. Now the TD-17 should be acting as a MIDI controller for the Micro Freak. Awesome, so cool. Also on the TD-17, I can change which notes each pad transmits to the Micro Freak. In this case, I'm just going to leave it to this kind of like major sounding thing we got going on here. It's awesome. It's really cool. But yeah, I can change that if I want to so I can have really whatever sonic palette I want. However, where things get interesting is on the Micro Freak though. And that's because new with the 5.0 firmware update to the Micro Freak, we gained the ability to have the key slash ARP modulation source, use a random feature instead of scaling from low to high with the keyboard. So to activate that, I'm gonna go utility, preset, modulations, 
and key slash art mode and set it to random. There we go. So now, whatever destination I assign the key slash ARP source to will randomly generate a new parameter value every time I hit a pad on the drum set. So using the matrix knob here, I'm going to go down to key slash ARP, and then I'm going to go down to cutoff, and we are going to maximize that value. There we go. Let's crank the resonance so we can hear what's going on. And now I should be able to hit the same pad over and over, and we should get a different filter cutoff value every note we hit. Okay, that's really interesting, right? That's, that's super weird. I'm going to lower the value a bit there of the modulation amount. There we go. Let's extend the release. Okay, so uh, it's uh, not as perfect as I thought. Uh, it's almost like they don't trigger every single time, but I think that's just because of the intensity of the routing. There we go. Yeah, that's super cool. <laughs> I really like that quite a bit. Uh, let's have some more fun. Let's also go and modulate the timbre knob with the key slash ARP, and I am going to max that modulation out. Turn on paraphonic mode. Okay. Super goofy, but the potential is definitely here, right? Like, I'm not just kind of overhyping myself on this because I think this is super exciting, especially because I can program again the uh, drum brain to have whatever notes I want on each pad. Okay, so not the most practical application right off the bat. Okay, so uh, maybe not the most practical demonstration right off the bat, but I just wanted to prove to myself that this would indeed work, and I think I have proved that. Uh, I've set up the biggest MIDI controller that I own, and uh, I think pretty successfully uh, used it to control the MicroFreak, I think with the right patch on the MicroFreak, uh, specifically... Uh, in regards to uh, the key slash ARP modulation section. And I think also uh, choosing the right pitches on the uh, TD-17, uh, you know, as kind of the starting points for where uh, those modulations actually begin from, if that makes sense. Uh, I think there's the potential here for maybe a pretty cool 
uh, jam type track situation going on here. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it feels like this is just the beginning. I do hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. If not, you can always leave a dislike. That's okay too. Doesn't hurt my feelings. Just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give it... I already did that. Hit that subscribe button. Ring that notification bell. Thank you all so very much for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.